Oh, do you? Okay. Well, I get. Oh, looks like I got a little green there. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, lots of lots of tribulations. This is my very first live stream, and uh, I do a channel on philosophy, particularly integral theory, stages of consciousness. It's not crazy wild stuff. It's just kind of a philosophical model. And uh, namaste to all who watch this in post or um, all who are here today. I gave a little intro earlier, but it sounds like um, I got a lovely person in the comments and uh, saying I, I was muted. So uh, here we are again. Uh, hopefully people will scrub to the front of it. Uh, today, I'm here to answer some comments. I got about 100 of them. I try to answer every single comment. Uh, they mean a lot to me. They mean a lot to the other people who do the show with me. And uh, we just can't believe the incredibly good response that we're getting to what we're doing, especially since it's this weird, dry, abstract uh, philosophy stuff. So I'm just kind of going through those. And um, if people pop into the chat, I'll, I'll definitely interact with you real, real time live. Um, uh, but in the meantime, I'm just going to start answering some of these comments and maybe it'll kind of uh, get a sense of what uh, I'm up to. I'll go ahead and heart these so that I know. So uh, Dylan K. Knorr, 2140 says, thank you for rectifying the definition of a theory of everything. Uh, and that's a great comment. I guess they're on board with it. Some people will find this idea of the theory of everything uh, possibly controversial. Some people will think it's just right on. Awesome. So in physics, they're always looking for uh, one set of rules, principles, particles, fundamental, um, how the universe began. What is reality made of? What, what is this? And can we, can we make a basic set of assumptions that encompass or describe reality in, in a really efficient and elegant way? And what's missing from the physical, uh, from the physics and science perspective is this thing that's happening right now which is I'm here, I'm inside of this body looking out through these eyes in this brain. Uh, so that's an illusion generated by the brain, but here it is, here we are. We dream, we lie, those are included in reality. So in Ken Wilber's integral theory, uh, the theory of everything also includes consciousness, subjectivity, perceptions, perspectives into the model. And we'll see that more in our tutorial videos, but. It sounds like we're getting some copacetic energy from this notion of Ken Wilber's theory of everything with integral theory. Uh, we've also, in our Discord server, we've been seeing the CTMU pop up a little bit. So there's other attempts to create some sort of marriage of physics and philosophy into a theory of everything. I wouldn't say it's a done deal yet, but with this integral theory, we do arrive at some sort of basic set of assumptions. In an integral, it's these five core modules uh, we've explored all of them on the channel. And if you know these, which uh, they're pretty native, like we intrinsically know them, but if you see them as sort of fundamental or basic to reality, uh, it, it really aids in the perception. And I believe, a lot of people believe that it does indeed philosophically encapsulate all of reality. So how does this uh, perspective change anything? Well, consciousness is fundamental. And this is a kind of dopey, you know, if a tree falls in the forest argument. But the one thing you'll notice is there is no reality without somebody experiencing it. And likewise, if there's somebody experiencing no reality, there's nothing going on. So reality is, at least as far as we can tell, reality is an interaction between what we call subjectivity, subjectivity and objectivity. It's uh, possibly that is some sort of delusion or some sort of split we introduce into our perception of reality. All right. Can we design our reality? We can design all kinds of things. The whole thing? Well, you want to be as close to... You, you got to be able to test it. <laughs> you have to be able to test whether, you know, your design is compatible with the, the reality that you're experiencing. Um, and absolutely, I think that we do design our reality uh, pretty continuously. It's inevitable. And with this integral theory, we're trying to get closer and closer to something that isn't us manifesting a reality. Uh, Cosmic Awareness Citizen says, why did you distort the voice in the last one? Uh, this is in reference to one of my 12 stages of consciousness video. When you get to stage 12, I'm not at stage 12, and I actually have 
no experience with stage 12. So I am completely incompetent, but I try my best to describe what this non-dual enlightened state of awareness would be like based on what other people have written, what other people said, the general vibe I get. Um, and so when I depict stage 12, I don't know what to do. I do crickets chirping. I do a picture of a sunset, silence. And sometimes I, I well, in this case, I, I uh, cussed out the camera and then reversed the audio. So if you do a little uh, audio engineering, you'll hear me uh, talking mad shit. Thank you for that comment. Let's have a podcast. Of, yeah, a hundred percent. I got um, me and James. We'll jump on your podcast. You come on our podcast. We are podcast swingers over here. We're in an open podcasting relationship. And anyone who wants to talk about the nature of reality or really uh, any topic, let's talk about fashion. Let's talk about Rick and Morty. Let's talk about Donald Trump. I'm all about it. Um, my main agenda is just to spread right now. My main agenda is just to spread this integral theory. Uh, hopefully make it a household set of terms and vocabulary. And whether you agree with it, whether you like it, not my problem. I'm just here spreading the love. I think it's a wonderful set of general um, orienting generalizations and assumptions that can really help to clear up a lot of problems in every domain of life. Not to like try and sell you on. I mean, it's just a way of seeing things. Um, a lot of the change comes from your, you know, your own experience of change. Oh, thank you. Uh, it says, th uh, congrats on the move. Yeah, so I just moved across the country and uh, I've been here about two weeks. I am in a much better place. I'm, I'm much happier now. I have resources to do things. I've got a huge industrial fan going behind me, even though it's negative 13 outside. But this room is very well heated. I'm very cozy and uh, I can't wait to unleash all the crazy stuff that we've been planning for a long time art, music, podcasting, and more of those tutorial videos that people seem to be loving. Uh, now, stage 10, Violet. Uh, Dylan Canero again comes back. What happened to Indigo? That's a pretty specific comment. Uh, I did do one on Indigo stage 9, I believe, in the short series, so I don't know what that is. Same guys on stage 11 here, Dylan Canero, 2140. Love it. It cuts off before clear light because there's no way to properly describe it in language at this state. That's what I was saying a moment ago. I don't know stage 12. And also it's sort of ineffable. ineffable. Um, if I were uh, at the non-dual non -dual state right now, if I were fully uh, awakened, enlightened, and I was communicating with you, it wouldn't really matter anyway because it's a state of consciousness. It's not words. It's not ideas. If I described it beautifully, it would be nice poetry from whatever stage or state you're currently at. Uh, goes on to say, ultraviolet is the highest stage, which can refer to this state as a way to communicate it in language because thought and language are, by nature, dual. Yeah, he's saying, you're saying what I'm saying here. Because, uh, Buddha and Christ, Buddha and Christ are both described as needing to be alone to meditate periodically, and it appears to me that they went to this clear light state to refresh, but returned to ultraviolet, which is our stage 11, in order to communicate with others. I wouldn't even say stage 11, actually. I would, it's a low stage, because we're talking about uh, classical antiquity. We're, this is a red and amber meme world. This was the birth of amber meme with the Buddha and the Christ. Um, so they're coming way down the spectrum and they're trying to interact uh with people who are very you know simple they believe in mythology um and clearly these individuals these enlightened individuals these prophets these teachers uh weren't aware of a stage theory that was not a thing that was not a situation at the time um that seems to arise around 1960 1970 it's just not to see uh, the world as an evolution of paradigms is a rather new thing. It required the whole existentialism movement, and it, it, it took a lot of people taking LSD, I should imagine, and that being popular and acceptable. Same person. I think I'm just going to get a whole slew of comments because I think they watch my series, so I'll just boom, boom, boom. Uh, for stage one, infrared. This is cavemen. That's how I put it. Any old baby, cavemen. 
uh, feral people, implying something of a primitive musical interpretation of nature based on discerning sounds, but not formulating a formal conception, rather an instinctive habit. Yes, stage one is pre-verbal, uh, possibly grunts, some sort of mu musicality, but communication is very simple. There is no culture, no society. There is your family and those people over there that you're not, you're kind of suspicious of. So you have no way to really interface with people all that well in that infrared world, that caveman world, like little magenta meme, little things would pop up and maybe communication would happen and maybe people would start planting and maybe a small village would form and then get avalanche tidal wave volcanoed. Nobody knows anything about that stuff. It's just gods and spirits at this point. And the world existed in that state for tens to hundreds of thousands of years before people got their act together. Uh, stage 12 again, excellent exposition, informative and entertaining. I like the little Genghis at the third stage. <laughs> yeah, I gotta talk about that. Hilarious detail. Okay. Yeah, I draw the, I, I was trying to do animations when I started, but I quickly realized I do not have time for that. So, but I did have these little drawings um, and, it, and it's just a man. Uh, I did draw a man, woman, children, but I stuck with the man. I'm somewhat of a man and um, evolved that person through the stages. So I have a little depiction. And so Genghis is your stage uh, three, the warlike um, power god, stage, uh, stage three red. Um, into indigo and upwards until just before clear light, it becomes somewhat blurred together in my experiences. Yes, yes. I suppose that might be due to the nature of digesting the intuitions from that state of consciousness. There are faint glimmerings until the next stage appears fully upon the scene, like the apparition of a ghost. Yeah, um, and here I wanna differentiate states and stages very clearly that we're generally, in my community, it seems like people are kind of using them interchangeably and I feel partially responsible for that. But it's true, as you do these state practices, it's a kind of wave-like motion. And you might get to that formless emptiness state and pop back down into more of a subtle state, more of like visionary uh, content, imaginative creative content like a dream. And they, there's no clear cutoff to that, right? There's no clear cutoff between whether you're happy or sad. It's just kind of like when you're there, you're like, whoa, I'm really there. But the, in, in nature, there's no line there. These shorts are clear enough that they recall most of the specific periods of my life where I first experienced them. Thank you. Other than the first two, which are my pre-memory. Yeah, when we're babies, little children, there's this interesting thing that we don't remember any of that, which a lot of people seem uh, to interpret, you know, what if you had experience before you were born? You also wouldn't remember that if you can't even remember being one. <laughs> so that's an interesting observation. I don't, I don't, uh, this is what we call spooky stuff. I can't really speak with authority on any of it. Uh, I look forward to seeing more. Yes, thank you. Uh, new commenter. I did a little pseudo yoga, what I call pseudo yoga. I'll do actual yoga at some point, but someone asked me about neck and shoulder pain for people who sit a lot, which I suffer from. And when I ro rotate my head around, it goes in my, in my face. So I made a short video just to be like, yo, this is what I do about that um, pseudo yoga. Not and trying not to scare away people who aren't into yoga. Uh, somebody says, promo uh, star SM, you're too hip for me. I don't know what that means. How to handle Motor Mouse, uh, a podcast that was near and dear to me. I have, I'm not a very assertive person in an interpersonal context. And so I had James helping me with that problem in business and in personal. And how to accomplish your goals when you're interacting with someone who is a broadcaster gives out but doesn't take in much says super helpful i'm a motor mouth haha <laughs> yeah no problem not trying to criticize anyone my problem's just as bad you know because while someone else doesn't listen to anyone i don't say the thing that you're supposed to say and i have it written on a whiteboard no holding back even if i'm gonna say something stupid i should just participate because i'm here on earth to be here and participate and i've held myself back quite a lot in life and i'm at the, at a ripe old age now i'm learning like people want me people want me to be here and i want you to be here 
we're all uh, consenting to this being jackasses on the planet Earth thing, and we're trying to clean up our act. So hopefully we're on the same page. Um, this is in response to 12 stages from my perspective. Crunked up kitty 333 says, I've reached clear light. It's literally indescribable and incomprehensible, but OMG, is it amazing? Um, I'm guessing this was DMT. I'll, I'll catch up with you in a minute. Uh, Motor Mouse episode, great episode. Thank you very much. Reality Designers, that's you. <laughs> Reality Designers is working on a 3D game interactive meditation tool. Ha ha ha, that's really cool. We're looking forward to uh, technologies that are integrating. Uh, we have the tech, but we don't really know. Uh, we don't have the know-how necessarily to put together um, a philosophy um, that would inform tech. You know, it's like I make the analogy. I feel that computer generated imagery in films is really uncreative. And that's because it's a huge group of tech, tech nerds and uh, digital artists they're not drawing, they're not conceiving of it. They're just kind of going by the book. When you land, you land in a crouch position and you hold that position. And it's this cliches over and over again. When, when there's a monster, it roars at the camera and the camera flies into its mouth. It's so stupid. Um, so cliches happen a lot. And we wanna see more true artistry, more creativity in these digital me media and in VR and just the idea of something that would interact while meditating, probably um, scanning scanning your brain in some way or scanning your um, your vitals and uh, assisting you in going to deeper and deeper levels. I'm uh, not a, a tech mystic, <laughs> but I did use Holosync, which is binaural beat technology, uh, different tones in each ear, intended... Um, it's like if a note, if you have a guitar, two guitar strings that are out of tune from one another, you know, dong, dong, it's like a little bit off and you'll hear this beat frequency wah, 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 between the two. So supposedly with binaural frequencies, there's slightly just a couple hertz or even like uh, several tens of cents off from one another. Well, that is uh, going to, you know, if it's four hertz, that's four times a second, you're going to hear in your hearing and the, the the conceit is that your brain will actually sync up to that wavelength so four hertz brain waves that's a good meditative state maybe your brain syncs up more i did it for years and i gotta say uh it really helped me to stay focused in the practice and it i believe it in, improved my meditative experience although you're not really supposed to qualify your meditative experience so Take that with a grain of sand as kind of a second tier uh, look at that. Morgan313 commenting specifically on moments, effective strategies for man managing talkative individuals in meetings and conversations. It looks like what they're doing is giving me um, titles. This is fantastic. This looks like um, what my coworker calls uh, a penny sorter. <laughs> they're really... They want, they want things to be more structured, and I, I really appreciate it. Uh, whether I can put that in my video, I, I don't know. I don't know um, how to use that. I would like to. But it is really well written and well done. Thank you, Morgan313. Uh, Jeff Johnson, DB second, 12 stages under 10 minutes. Never be ruthless. Be good to one another. Just like Bill and Ted said. It's be excellent to each other. Ha <laughs> ha. Hey, Morgan. There we are. Um, great job. What, what, why'd you do that? What is this? <laughs> it's beautiful. But am I, am I supposed to uh, insert those? Can I, can I put them in there so that people can navigate that easier? I would love to do that with my iceberg video because that's a long video and there's a lot of really detailed info, but it's boring as heck. Uh, good long watch if you're, Somewhat, in, if you're kind of in the middle of getting into Ken Wilber and you want to know about controversy, controversies and things like that, and um, trivia, trivia and controversies. I haven't really done like a bio of Ken Wilber or anything. I'm not like, a, you know, I don't like hero worship Wilbur. I just think he came up with some real awesome ideas. He's, you know, 
he's to me like an Einstein or um, Stephen Hawking. Well, who's somebody who's a, a Nietzsche? You know, it's someone who just who just uh, has the finger on the pulse of something that means a lot to me. And I got to say, in 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 my youth, in about 15 years of searching for answers and finding, you know, Don Juan and Ayn Rand and Krishnamurti and Colin Wilson, Wilbur was the one that stuck with me to this day. It's the one I never could let go of because once I uh, once I see once I started seeing integral states and stages, I couldn't unsee it. Uh, it's not a matter of belief. It's just like I look around at the world and it's like, Oh, okay. Green memes, you know, in conflict with orange meme. Oh, okay. Like they're not acknowledging the lower right quadrant <laughs> and I, it just becomes kind of this multi-tool. I like to think of it as a Swiss army knife, philosophical Swiss army knife. Uh, Gustavo Sarate 595. Impressive how people in this comment section are illuminated beings, almost Buddha like people. Yeah. We get the comments that, Oh man, everybody here thinks they're stage 12. It's so annoying. And we get the comments like, wow, there's a lot of awakened individuals here. I can go both ways. I can say from the, my discord, you know, I interact with these people a lot. We're all flawed. We're all different. There is some genuine states going on. There's some genuine stages going on. It's real. Um, but uh, in any case, when you're talking about these sorts of states and stages of spirituality, there's going to be people overselling themselves, you know, of course. Um, people want to be the superlative thing. Uh, and ironically, the more you kind of awaken, the less that's an interest. But uh, not always. We can descend to first tier and be prideful and uh, bra braggadocious about our enlightenment. Sure, why not? Uh, Silas Tram. I'm indigo when going for a walk at night during a full moon while listening to nostalgic songs on headphones. Who the hell isn't? That is a wonderful thing to do. I have walked myself out. I cannot walk like more than a mile anymore because my knees are all busted from long walks, meditative hikes. You listen to Bach, you listen to uh, Avenged Sevenfold. I, <laughs> it's a wonderful thing. Uh, experiencing music in a sort of uh, hypnagogic state is probably my favorite. Throw on some Radiohead, Mars Volta, oh boy. Good times. <laughs> I'm I'm a '90s person, so I like these old old experimental bands. Cac Perspizis forty two thirty nine, a bit lost at seven stage seven. Understand fifty percent what he speaks at eight nine ten. Understand only shards, and this is an observation we'll make a lot you generally comprehend up to the stage where you're pretty well centered and maybe the next one. And then it's a whole bunch of dog shit. Like you don't know uh, anything about stages that are considerably higher than you. And that's how it is. That's what stages are. Uh, it's, it's as you learn these stages, you become able to comprehend, communicate, and even act them in your real life. Uh, I find them all comprehensible at this point. I probably think at about stage eight turquoise uh at my best you know uh maybe center around teal turquoise i emotionally feel up to green i would say and in my actual behavior probably about green you know i'm not doing anything world changing i'm not out in the field bringing the evolution of paradigms into the into the work of anything uh, altitude stage seven, Matthew, Medina, 12, 30. All of these videos have really intrigued me and opened my eyes to a perspective that in a weird way felt natural once the dots connected for me. But I want to make sure that I'm following all of this and not merely being ignorant. What do you think of possibly doing a series sort of like this one, but explaining how a teal would interact and balance out help? each of the first tier altitudes, infrared, magenta, red, amber, orange, green, and possibly even other teal personalities and higher? That's a great question. And that's a great application of um, integral theory of altitudes, stages, spiral dynamics. That is actually one of the main goals that stage uh, seven teal has is, okay, I'm in a workplace. It's predominantly orange. There is a red meme individual. 
I get it, but how do I work with this? Not how can I destroy them? How can I get rid of them? But how can I make this system flow naturally? And how can we get the best out of everybody at every stage? And uh, I would love to do that video. Uh, it's It would be a lot of work and it is a difficult video. Uh, but I think the next big tutorial, we're going to do the podcast nonstop always and discussions and in practice. As far as tutorials, I think the one we need right now is just the blanket integral theory video, the, the five modules. Um, Aqualolatus, I think is my term. It might have been someone else's, but uh, quadrants, levels, lines, types, states. And that is, in a way, that is the entire integral theory. If I could shoebox it, those five modules are the current integral theory. To know them and be familiar with them according to integral theory is to more or less comprehend reality at the current time. Uh, Morgan says, uh, great, I can use those. Uh, Wilbur is brilliant at integrating very different thought systems. Yes, I'm going to head at, uh, love, loved having you here. Thank you. First live stream and uh, whoever pops in, I'm, I'm grateful to have you. Hopefully I'll build up a bit of an audience and um, this is really fun. Uh, 12 stages under 10 minutes. Mario K. Margo 2662 listening to this on a heroic dose of and then it kicked in and the comment ended. <laughs> I'm going to guess LSD. Yeah, I'm going to guess LSD. Middle of nowhere, 1313. So in the center, it turns out it turns to word salad, LOL. $10 words make pretty good croutons, I guess. So here's a funny thing. I get this comment a lot. And the commenter is referring is always referring to a particular stage. And it's not the same one every time. In other words, it's the stage two above the one that they're at. And from their perspective, at that point, at stage eight or stage nine or whatever, I just start saying a bunch of nonsense. And yet, tons and tons of other people understand perfectly what I'm saying. And this is what it means to not be cognitively at stage nine, is someone is communicating at a decent level stage nine concepts, and you're saying, oh, you got your head up your ass. You're using all these big words to alienate me. That is not my style. And I'll tell you right now, most of the time in my life, I am dumbing down my vocabulary. I have a very big vocabulary. It's not a point of pride. It's, it's not shameful either. It's just the fact of the matter. So when I talk to people, I'm generally trying to think of synonyms for big words that I have. So to suggest that I'm sitting there like thesaurusing bigger and bigger words is absurd. I would never do that. That would be counter to the goal of communicating with people. However, higher stages require nomenclature. These are big concepts. They're big words. Green and above is very well read. There's no way around that. To read a book is one of them is pretty much the only direct way to understand the thoughts of a historical person. The most intelligent people who ever lived have written books that you can read. And for a moment in time, your brain is cogitating something resembling the thoughts of these brilliant people. They use big words. Heidegger uses big words. All right. I, I, I can't. I can't feel any shame for for saying the correct word and the support that we get for our vocabulary far outweighs people who are offended that I use a word they don't understand. Uh, I can't help with that. And it's all it's people where English is the first language. And I'm not saying you should improve your vocabulary. Just don't get so mad when people are talking about big brain philosophy concepts and using, you know, undergraduate college level words. I, I'm, that's about where I'm at. I, I'm, I don't use big words. I, uh, as far as the integral theory people go, I'm one of the most like casual speakers out there. So I really can't relate. <laughs> it's just funny. It's a funny thing. Um, I'm sleeping, you dirty bastard. Little joke. Uh, 12 stages, seven string shredhead. 
that's got to be Master Shredder. I can only relate to the upper and lower levels. The middle levels sound like a tiresome liberal arts gender studies essay. There it is again. Um, this would be states and stages confusion. You have had states that, that states of these 9, 10, 11, 12 higher structures, but that's not you all the time. You're not always in that state. Uh, oftentimes it's only when you're on drugs, so very not always in that state. Um, but that doesn't mean you don't know it. You, you can know this content, you can experience it, you can have a traumatic event and experience these awakened states. Um, and it is, it is quite possible to have these states from amber meme, from orange meme. This is our understanding of, <laughs> this is our understanding of the history of religion is people having these states from the lower stages. But the interesting thing that's available to us now into the future is the potential of these being mainstream everyday sorts of stages of consciousness where an enlightened indivi individual is part of society not off in a mountain because society can't comprehend them and they can't comprehend society uh that's where it's a stage when it's arising in all four quadrants in the collective as well as the individual we really have not seen much of anything like that i think my phone battery is going to determine the length of this stream Kraken enthusiast, crack enthusiast 6022 <laughs> says, warns us not to go past Teal. Sure. Yeah, get up. Hang out at Teal. Teal's good. We need Teal in the world right now. I agree. Mr. Frontside Bus. My, oops. My self-local memeplex gave out somewhere between Teal and Turquoise. Just on that line. The stuff above sounded like low bitrate fossil fossil poems. I don't see again. I don't know what the word fossil means. F O S S I L E. Not ashamed of it. No idea what that word means. Uh, low bitrate. Not sure. Someone clearly spinning in his graves for omitting a certain blue. Yeah, maybe <laughs> there could be more second tier memes. And sometimes there's only one second tier meme. But this is the integrative. It's um, often seeing the world, the self, and society as an evolutionary development of paradigms or meta paradigms, and uh, hasn't been around for a long time. Hard to describe, and to whatever extent you want to subdivide it, break it up into second tier meme structures. That's perfectly fine. It's a continuum. Uh, currently, we do two teal and turquoise. And a lot of people are confused about the difference between them. Uh, I like to simply put it like turquoise is kind of teal when teal has accomplished the goal that it sees as a goal. Uh, but you could definitely subdivide. You could subdivide all of these. Many people do. Different de developmental theories draw those lines in different places. In Wilbur's integral psychology book, he lines up, I think, more than 100 different stage theories and shows, you know, the overlap is there, it exists, but the lines aren't in the same places. And that's because we're dividing up a continuum. We're arbitrarily choosing what we call a stage structure. You could have a three-stage structure, first tier, second tier, third tier. That's a stage model. But then we divide those up into 12 stages because it makes communication and practice easier. Tile maker 4962. I think indigo through ultraviolet are the same thing. Clear light should only be silence as manifestation. Yeah, sure. Again, you can squish them together. You can subdivide further. Um, a lot of Eastern spiritual schools will, will kind of have five um, state structures, five different stages of states that you can go through. Ye, uh, tile maker 4962 is saying all the subtle stuff can be one bucket and that's fine that can be your system and i kind of agree uh to an extent that indigo and and uh violet are very similar because they're both dealing with the subtle the only reason i i really do like to have those be indigo uh indigo <laughs> and violet is because people experience indigo as a real mind blow um, I like when I was starting to have these, my first kind of enlightened, awakened states, it was had, I did not believe that it was possible. So as it was occurring, I'm like, oh my God, I'm tripping and I'm not on anything. 
which is a really primitive way of thinking of it, but it's kind of like that. And so I, I think that's what we would call in, indigo is when you're super curious about it, but you don't really get the hook yet. You don't understand what it takes to be able to get there from anywhere. And it's very similar to the teal turquoise thing. It's like teal is breaking open the toy box and turquoise is being organized. Indigo breaking open the consciousness toy box, state's toy box. Violet is a very well articulated uh, visionary prophetic ability. Way of the Rogue, some good stuff and well done, but I have a few questions. We work with this all the time from the source, Claire Graves, the originator. Ken Wilbur didn't come up with it. Yes, that's correct. Just used it in his integral theory. But I would note that Wilbur and Graves knew each other. Uh, Wilbur was aware of Graves and you'd have to assume Graves is aware of, of Wilbur. Um, Graves probably saw the potential of emergent cyclical theory, but the potential was not realized in, and he would not have gotten it there. Wilbur is the reason why spiral dynamics is popular. Spiral dynamics was an attempt to popularize emergent cyclical theory. So yes, it's true. Uh, the credit goes to Graves for this stage model, the altitude stage model, which is sort of a generic off-brand version of spiral dynamics, which is an intellectual property. So I like the open source version and full credit to Graves, Beck, Cohen, Todorovic, Todorovic um, and, and Wilbur and anyone else um, who puts their own spin on this developmental meta concept. Sure. Uh, as far as I know, no one has mapped past Indigo. Uh, I would check out Aurobindo, but yeah, no, not really. Yeah. The uh, Wilbur is trying to make a 12 stage system, whereas spiral dynamics often keeps it going up to what they call coral, which we call Indigo, sometimes not even up there. And that's for good reason. It's because these societies do not exist. They, they're potential. So it's a, it's an excellent point. Um, for one, as there is a reflective quality up and down with I and me systems. So I'd like to know where you got info on anything beyond that. Secondly, even Ken Wilbur states, this is not about waking up or consciousness. It's about growing up and values. The system was born out of the relationship between circumstances and values. So the quick switch over to spiritual awakening is weird. Yes. This is a gross oversimplification. Yes. But I am curious as to where you got these add-ons from the original. Yeah. Um, so this is the core conflict of spiral dynamics. When spiral dynamics went spiral dynamics integral, it was because uh, Don, Don Beck was a fan of Wilbur. And Wilbur's model was essentially, you know, you go up to stage yellow in spiral dynamics, you get to that integrative stage. And then as he saw it from there, the only way up was through these awakened enlightened sta stages. Um, and th this is pretty much just Wilbur's take on it. And uh, Beck, to whatever extent, Beck agrees with Wilbur. The originators, uh, Graves, and uh, the rest of the spiral dynamics movement do not like us putting this third tier on top. So that's a matter of your own awareness of this or your own um buying into it i would say i'm uh but yes it is ken wilbur it is 100 percent uh ken wilbur in probably the last 20 years started doing it this way he's always tacked on the enlightenment stuff after the growing up it is stages of growing up but it's a new thing to present it as the altitudes model altitudes is not spiral dynamics and it's not beholden to the rules of spiral dynamics um Spiral dynamics is the values line. It deals with values, yes. Altitudes is supposed to be meta to that. So the altitude would line up with the spiral dynamics on the lines. So these higher, yes, you can have values at stage 9, 10, 11, 12, and spiral dynamics can choose whether it wants to, to acknowledge or, or uh, include those or not, and it may be right in not including them. But altitudes is intended to line up with all the lines and any developed model, any developmental model you could come up with would, according to the conceit of the theory, it would line up with altitudes. So I hope that's kind of a quick and dirty answer to that. And I'm with you. Like, I, I'm not I'm, like I'm saying, I don't buy into this. 
I'm just presenting it. And I, I personally think that it's correct, but I'm not trying to tell everybody like these are the answers to the universe. And if you don't believe that meditation causes any change in, in waking up or, or I mean, sorry, in growing up, that's a totally valid position. This is a pioneering realm. I have my position and uh, I have a lot of experience with in myself and in others. I, I really do see um, at least up to 10, 11 born out in, in, in reality and in practice. So that's my own two cents about it. But I'm not advancing it as some sort of absolute position or anything like that. Um, at PO show says indigo it is then so a fan probably um at turquoise saying oh i see indigo is the best one well wherever you are you're gonna see which one is the best one <laughs> uh hey look someone else gets it lol awesome thank you uh oh boy here's a big one okay great <laughs> oh boy porch monkey hunter Oh boy, I'm canceled. Uh, the 6956 says amber slash red is supposed to be a representation of a traditionalist and orange slash green is supposed to be representative of a liberal minded person. Okay, I see where you're going. It's kind of the other way around though, that politics is, are divided in half by stage development and amber and red naturally fall into a more conservative position there. Orange and green naturally tend to fall into a more liberal uh, position there. So the causation you can see as going either way. But I would assume that consciousness precedes uh, the political system. To juxtapose worldviews and categorize them on a consciousness scale would be a display of profound ignorance. So this is a flat, this is the flatland perspective. We're saying that um, the left and the right are just uh, two different types two different ways of seeing reality and so to to make this claim that uh cons the conservatives in general and the liberals in general are conforming to stage structures as measured by developmental psychologists and that the the more liberal st stage structure structures seem to be a higher development which emerged later in time if you look at the history of the world and the development of individuals, yes, we can say that a more liberal perspective is a higher evolution of consciousness. And I'm sorry if that isn't your viewpoint. And this is not to say that there aren't higher level forms of conservatism and lower level forms of liberalism, just that this is the uh, complexity of the system, the level of inclusion and concern and care and capacity to comprehend goes up and these politics emerge historically. As if to say, those on said consciousness levels have completely asserted their idealistic worldviews upon reality and are refusing any contradictions. Yeah, uh, and this is true. The first tier stages all do that. So yes, orange and green can come off as ignorant and un- and failing to understand um, different stages of consciousness. Sure. Uh, and this is that's a valid critique of, of them. A total state of cognitive dissonance that wants to assert itself and its ideas onto others. This is all first tier memes, I'm saying. All of this masked under a supposed consciousness that is a notch higher than your average traditionalist. Your first limiting belief is that as you climb in consciousness, you lose the traits of lower consciousness levels. That is not true. Um, I don't believe that. I think that as you ascend, you, it becomes imperative to strengthen your ability at those lower stage structures. Because again, when you get to second tier, the whole conceit of second tier is that you become aware that these even exist. And your desire is not to exclude lower, it's to embrace and include all. Uh, as you transition between color levels, you retain all of your previous traits. Yes, transcend and include. That is to retain all of your previous traits. That might no longer be cornerstones of your, or sorry, they might not, 
they might no longer be cornerstones of your perception, but they are still there. Yes. Yep. That knowledge and experience is still there and can be used to accurately observe the world around you. Yes. Totally agree. Uh, when in Rome, you know, the situation dictates what stage to be at oftentimes. And sometimes you don't have the choice of being at the highest stages that you can be. Um, Evan says the vertical altitude charts is because it is the chronological order they are stacked on each other rather than a hierarchy. Yeah, it's it's kind of like what what Wilbur would call, um, you know, a hierarchy of inclusion. It's a or, uh, it's a growth hierarchy um, to a certain extent, but it is not to say better, and it is not to say like just get higher, get higher, get higher. That's not the point. It's to be solid and healthy. This is all about like mental health. And it's vertical, just like you say, because you can see in your own personal history and in the history of the world, hmm, interesting. They needed that previous stage to stack this stuff on top of it. And if you think, you know, the the course of history went wrong after Amber Meme, you know, like a traditionalist Mennonite Amish, you know, I'm, I'm going back to that. We're farming again. We're, we're homesteading. That's the correct way to be. Sure, that's a perspective. That's a stage perspective. There's nothing incorrect about believing that that's optimal. I just, I personally, I feel very optimized in this warm room with light and uh, meals sent to me in the mail for very cheap, uh, being able to make uh, everything that I need fairly easily and being lazy as hell and still getting away with murder. I'm into it. But maybe you want to go out in the woods and lay on the ground. I know a lot of people like that. They're tough. Cool. I, I love it. It's about articulating the distinctions of phases that a consciousness goes through. Yeah, and that's what we're trying to do. Uh, this isn't the ultimate model. It's just a great model. And that's where we're trying to get with it. Real left, real left, real leftover, maybe? Four is just pure cult mentality. Yeah, Amber Amber and Red are sort of where cults show up, um, throwing in a bunch of green stuff, a bunch of new age kind of ideas, crystal stuff, uh, Abrahamic stuff, sure. Uh, but the cult is generally this Amber meme, this need, and uh, red, red meme power stuff, and Amber meme, we all believe the same thing, and nobody else is allowed to tell us anything. That's very Amber meme. Um, on my travel video, Chris Tally EI9QG says, I can identify with a lot of this adventures of the mundane realm. Yes, it, it was a bit mundane. Self-sabotage self -sabotage for sport. Yes. Fun with townies. Surviving on granola and gas station fodder. I've driven to from Alabama to Washington State. Oof. And that end back alone twice, once on a dirt bike. Ooh. Ooh. I had the time of my life. Got a Forrest Gump up in here. <laughs> I just felt like biking. <laughs> That's beautiful. I'm not quite that hardcore. For me, it's hardcore to not have a lot of space in my car and not bring my cell phone. That's that's an adventure. And like I say, you know, you define what you think is an adventure, how much hardship you want, <laughs> and what variety of it. Uh, Lord Latch, Primo, Latch Prime was here. Smile, wink. Reality designers, yo, as someone from the middle of Minnesota, mm -hmm, in a small town, the Midwest really is like that. So glad I moved south. Yeah, I was a little critical of the Midwest, having just come from it. Uh, generally saying, like, my experience of people in the Midwest is it's kind of like a checked out form of humanity. It's kind of like, uh, I don't want to deal with the future being right now. I don't, I, I don't want any, anything to happen. Uh, what are you doing in my store? Get out. Uh, Morgan 313 is the song at 33, 35 on Spotify. Uh, so I, basically I have like thousands of just junk songs that I've recorded. I've never really tried to go anywhere uh, with my music. It's just been a sort of cathartic thing. Uh, you know, I've been in bands and stuff, but I'm not like too serious about it. But it, I end up having this pretty big bank of music to draw from as like back, backing tracks. And uh, that's a lot of fun to kind of comb through it. Um, I think some of my material is probably on Spotify. And if I'm, if I'm correct about what you're referring to, it's probably travels. So 
the band that I did was called Stein. That band had, uh, I, I, I counted them all up at one point. It's like more than 40 people were in that band over the course of like 12 years. It's been a minute since I've you know known these numbers, but uh, I always got new people. I always reformed the band. I really wanted it to be a big thing. We released three albums. We recorded a fourth album and it is pre-mastered. I've never, it's just sitting on my hard drive. Uh, it was just a really frustrating experience, honestly. And uh, I, being in a band kind of sucks. <laughs> so I eventually just gave up on doing that whole thing. It wasn't the kind of rewarding that I wanted. And I got too busy with career and, you know, just trying to do something that does make a difference. Uh, kind of overrode it. But um, I think a couple of the Stein albums are on Spotify. Uh, I know a lot of our stuff can be found on YouTube, especially the live stuff. But as far as like uh, releasing a, some of that stuff, uh, I have a kind of primitive web website called steinunlimited.com where you can kind of find some of that music. But yeah, no, it's just kind of just kind of exists. And I, I throw it in the podcasts and things here and there. Um, if I get like, if people are into it, I will gladly like put it out there. I'm honestly kind of embarrassed about most of my music. Uh, I would love to kind of make a comeback and make some new music that I could be really proud of now. And he says, uh, ooh, lot, you got replies. Morgan313 says, by the way, could you enable captions on your YouTube podcasts? Oh, I didn't know they weren't. Okay, well, yeah, I should. Uh, they make your videos more accessible and more AI summary. Print. Absolutely. Yeah. I didn't even know that was a jam. I know in my early ones, they had captions and I guess I just took that for granted. Uh, uh, Evan replies, that's a funny, good idea. All transcript bot, AI transcript, transcript bot for easy copy paste summary stuff. Uh, as far as optimizing for algorithm, I am just rubbish so far. Uh, the number one thing I could do is actually have thumbnails. <laughs> so I'm, I'm working on that. Yes, it's called Tammy AI. They already exist. Yeah. And again, yeah, this is probably something you do in five seconds with AI. I, I just, I'm not, I live in the future. I, I'm not caught up with what you can do right now at all. Uh, <laughs> generic YouTube account. Midwest isn't checked out. It's checked into the interpersonal aspects of life. Coming from someone in the Midwest who's family conscious. Yeah, again, I'm shitting on it. Um, it's idyllic in a lot of ways. It's it just depends on, you know, who you are and what you want. And I w uh, I'll be more specific. I was living in central Michigan in a small town, another small town. And that was the impression that I got. You know, I've been other places that were a little more awake, a little more alert. And it also, I just don't value the same things as those people did. I was trying to open a yoga school and we were getting run out of town by rich people who owned the town and didn't want it to change. That was a big arc in my life. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm, I apologize. I'm not, <laughs> it is definitely hyperbolic to say the entire Midwest is checked out. It's, uh, it's a goof, you know, you can talk trash about people from the Pacific Northwest for sure. And Southerners, this is, these are, this is bigotry I'm doing. <laughs> um, yeah, I know, we're joking around. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Joshua Rainbolt 6623. I feel like I've seen that number before. Is there something special about 6623? Loved it. Wish I knew more like minded individuals in my day to day life. It's nice to see y'all talking about this subject matter. At the moment, it's hard not to come off slightly crazy when talking about this material to the people I see every day. Yes, that's what I'm up to. Um, I have I had this problem for like a decade. Nobody wants to hear about your Ken Wilber garbage. What are you in a cult? This sounds crazy. Are you feeling okay? Have you been sleeping? Have you been eating? Yeah, yeah. I just I just read books on philosophy, and I thought this was really compelling stuff. <laughs> um, we call them closet integrals. It's there's not a lot of us um, at that stage, and also specifically who know the Ken Wilber vocabulary. It's isolating. It's it's a lonely place to be, and I went out into the night and I shine my flashlight and here these people are showing up. Hey, I'm into this too. Oh my goodness. This is the most wonderful thing ever. I, I, I had no idea that this would happen. This is, <laughs> this is just the most incredible thing ever. Yeah. Um, 
I encourage everybody to jump in the Discord. The hope with the Discord server um, is that this is a place where you can go on a voice chat at any time or get into an involved conversation with people that are somewhere around stage seven, integral, integrative paradigm. Uh, Joshua Foreman, 2611, says, okay, I agree. Chloopy with an awesome avatar image. Wow. I can comprehend all levels, but anything above indigo creeps me out and feels alien. Yeah. It's as if the higher the consciousness, the more you let go of anything subjective. Interesting. Some people would say you let go of everything objective, but definitely the subject object split becomes uh, a centerpiece at those penultimate stages. And um, I like, I think uh, stage nine is the spookiest. I, I think when you're just getting exposed to spiritual states, that's when you, you're in the nightmare place and the trickster is trying to get you out of there. They're trying to scare you off. It's you, but it's an unconscious version of you. That's my opinion. But it's a, it's a gatekeeper spirit. Uh, when I have had profound states, it was always through a nightmare. It was always by facing a demon or allowing something to kill me and eat me or allowing somebody to do something horrible. It was definitely a surrender and a sacrifice that allow, allow, allows me to break through that egoic barrier in the subtle. Don't do it in real life, but in this realm of imagination, visionary experiences, there seems to me to be something to spookiness, getting abducted by aliens, seeing the Mothman, uh, possibly hallucinating, possibly um, having delusions momentarily in the Kundalini awakening scenario, because a lot of unintegrated garbage is spilling out. You're becoming psyche aware. You're becoming aware of things outside of your ego, but still inside of you, inside of your psyche. Very frightening. In fact, the most frightening thing you can imagine. That's where it lives. <laughs> also, your avatar is creepy as hell. Scotty Roxwell. I'm almost all of these all the time. So I suppose that makes me a brown poopy color, which is exactly how I feel. Poopy. Is that possible? I am a rainbow. I'm all stages at once. Well, okay. But okay. What you're saying right now, I'm almost all of these all the time. You're not pre-verbal. Um, making <laughs> poopy joke. Gosh. Um, I guess you are and you aren't a rainbow, you know, but. What do you express the most? What do you do with your life? How do your relationships go? What do you do for work? What's your interest in life? What are your goals? That's how you can determine which stage you're at. It's not going to be all of them. It can't. It, they're kind of mutually exclusive when you're looking at, you know, the the general baseline of your attitude and um, cognition and the way you act in real life. I'm at stage seven. However, I have certain financial and life goals where I, yes, where I need to operate at lower levels to be more successful. Uh, me too. Yeah. They don't want you at stage seven in the workplace, especially entry level or uh, if you're trying to appeal to the corporate people. You want to be good, solid orange or green. That's generally what exists in the world right now. Uh, you know, a healthy higher meme isn't a turnoff because you're chameleonic and you have an abundance mentality. But keep that stuff in the closet. Don't don't share Ken Wilber. Uh, yeah, um, you will have again regression in service of ego. Um, try to find try to find work where you are allowed to be the stage that you're at, the higher stage. But good luck. Whew. <laughs> then again, you know, at the at the higher stages, we can just starve. <laughs> Bleh five says, is there a chill stage? We did a whole hour long video. It's coming out soon. <laughs> That's a very difficult question to ask. It's also a very easy question. Uh, sorry to answer. It's also a very easy question to answer a billion different ways. So we did as many as we could and we made a video out of it. Is there a chill stage? I think they, I think this pep, this question happened more than once. Being all those all the time is double speak food. Ridiculous. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm always trying to kind of yes and but 
I think if you're saying I do all of these, it might be kind of like, eh, I don't, I just kind of, I'm, I'm suspicious. I'd like to dialogue with a rainbow body. Andrea Brucato, 4280. Why is this bullshit being recommended, recommended to me? I don't know. I, I'm curious why the algorithm is sending people to me myself, if I'm, if I'm going to be real with you. I love that people who aren't the slightest bit interested in this are coming and watching. Uh, I don't know why you commented on my video if it's of no interest <laughs> to you. Your, your comment is driving my channel, uh, Andrea Brucato. So stop commenting if you want me to disappear from your reality. And please do continue commenting because I do love you in spite of the algorithm racomanding me. Uh, Jay Clive responds, yeah, I mean, it's an interesting premise. However, the scary thing to me is that nobody in the comment section is questioning it. Well, you are. Nobody at all is questioning whether or not any research has gone into this video. Uh, no, yeah, no research. I, I read Ken Wilber's books uh, met, uh, several times a long time ago. I'm not an expert. I'm an armchair enthusiast. Uh, this is the red letter media of philosophy. I am nobody. I have. I have. I don't have any credentials i i don't care to um question the hell out of it are you kidding me uh lots of people are questioning it and i encourage you to no don't buy what i'm saying this is wild stuff i'm saying that enlightenment is real i'm making a good case for it I disagree with me of course i i did not believe in this <laughs> and they're saying that's scary well yeah everybody's simply believing uh, what they see on the internet as truth, that is extremely effing scary. I, yeah, I, I, it's not my fault. But what I figure is, if we're going to all echo chamber and we're all going to be believe crap that we see on the internet, I feel as good as anyone at sending Ken Wilber Integral information out there to do with as thou wilt. Uh, yes, uh, this is a scary time to live, but we're overstating the, the fear of it. Because the main thing about today is that everybody has a sounding board. And so all these ideas that are encroaching on your reality, they really aren't as prevalent or as powerful as you might imagine. I can tell you for sure, my bullshit is not prevalent. <laughs> People are not buying into this. Uh, the fact that we're getting a slim fraction of the pie, the slightest bit interested in this is blowing my mind right now. If it becomes a problem, I'll be the first one to join your side. The Buddha. Pleased to see you, brother. I think around Indigo, I started getting flashbacks from my old LSD trips, LMAO. Yes, uh, I'm big on like drugs or cheating on God, but I took drugs, and it seems to be the case that when people take psychedelics, hallucinogenic psychedelics, they get in touch with something that certainly resembles the subtle realm and often even causal uh seems to be a similar brain function however you know transcendental mystics are generally sober and would avoid something like that and if you use a chemical to get there it's sort of like a chemical dependency which is to say if you need to drink to relax now you can't relax without drinking if you need to take acid to communicate with the divine now you can't do that without acid. That's an argument, you know. I, it seems to be the case that people take LSD, DMT, uh, psilocybin, and they come out the other side with some doors open. Other people go nuts and become suicidal, perhaps. It, I don't know the answer to that, but I can tell you uh, Wilbur doesn't do those drugs, and I don't recommend it. But I, most of the people I know who have, spiritual states have played around with psychedelics and the people who stay there are rarely the the real genuine stage mystics uh but look at alex gray uh very psychedelic informed and very stable there it would seem uh nice avatar B -B -E 2059 anyone who knows astrology can correlate okay i 
a little weak on astrology and again it's um you know magenta to amber as a as a uh, belief structure but we're making some parallels here so here hear them out red is aries that makes sense amber is taurus orange is gemini green is cancer and capricorn well i'm i'm capricorn and i'm green teal is pisces pike I could say don't know much about that uh i don't know all the signs and what and what they're supposed to correlate with um like many people i've gone and read my birth chart and what a capricorn is supposed to be like and i'll say yeah that's me i don't know if someone gave me a false one if i would also agree with that maybe so but i don't put much stake in astrology um i studied astronomy and in astronomy you know you learn that astrology was astronomy before we had science and when we had science it no longer made sense especially since if you're born in capricorn now well the the actual um the stars are are shifting over the course of like hundreds of years to where you aren't actually in that constellation anymore and so it becomes even more uh not related to the stars when you were born uh as far as empirical evidence for these like types based on when you were born uh, there's a lot of science done and practically not no results no no evidence that um the time of year you were born has a huge influence on your on your personality or character so i'm not trying to dismiss or crap on it but this is you you got to bring if you're talking about the stars causing personality we are at least orange. We have to factor that in. We have no choice. Existen Existence University says everyone above six are just insane. You're going to see that one a lot. You're going to see that point a lot. That means that you're stage five. <laughs> awesome place to be. Spent most of my life there. Logic Zombie says Obra Maestra. And uh, there's an option to translate that into English masterpiece ah i was too dumb to know what it meant but i appreciate the sentiment <laughs> uh this is gonna get cut off because my phone's gonna run out of batteries <laughs> but it's my pleasure to be here this is fun and it saves me from having to write this crap out i i do prefer talking to typing although you might get something more thoughtful when i type uh that's a good point that i probably should have made at the start of the video is like if your comment is hearted and I didn't say anything, it's probably because I answered it on a video. I answer almost all of my comments. If I don't, it's because YouTube is hiding it from me. This is a conspiracy. It's not shadow banning integral, it's a glitch. <laughs> awesome, Iliatia. Where do I fit? I always think this is what it is. Ooh. There's no difference between bliss and suffering. The point of life is life itself. I don't believe in oneness. I believe in individuality. I don't believe in ego. It's just a concept that doesn't suit me. I don't believe in non-attachment or non-desire. I think suffering is beautiful and worthy of being done. I appreciate the darkness of this world. I don't mind contributing to it. In fact, I can't help it. I was forged from cruelty. It's in my nature. Change or don't, meaning is in the mind. Whatever you say is, everything matters, and it's perfect. Let it be. Well, this is beautiful, and it's poetic, and it's well-written. Um, it is it is a little too much poetry for me to really respond to the hook of it, but really good points are made. And um, how, uh, you know, I don't believe in oneness. I believe in individuality. Are those mutually exclusive? Are they, I, I believe in oneness and I believe in individuality. I, I also say I don't believe in anything. <laughs> I don't believe in ego. Who doesn't believe in ego? What does ego mean? I, I don't believe in ego. Okay. <laughs> it's just a concept that doesn't suit me. Hmm. Okay. I think you get the point. Let's move on. But I, I, yeah, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to be like a jerk. It's just uh, 
ego is literally your sense that I and me. That's what ego is. <laughs> um, but uh, this sounds like maybe some, you know, they're admitting to kind of trauma here. And um, that can kind of produce issues with power and control. And this seems to really be like, nobody tells me what's what, you know, I tell you that whatever you think is true. Okay, let's save some steps then just like everyone can think whatever they want. And that's fine. Uh, these, some of them are kind of weird to deal with. <laughs> awesome comment though. Uh, gaming Genish 4844. I'm gonna be honest. I have experienced all of them form instinctual to supermind. Yeah. And I kind of go from one color to other colors. But one thing is I know down to my core is that I am mixture of all the colors present in other words. I am pure white light present in infinity, endless, immortal, all powerful present moment or with God. And if we observe them as we grow older, complete, healthy, like a normal human, we start form. I'm counting from 13 years to death of physical body. Because before that, our consciousness was still being formed when we were little. So instinctual, hormone, full, teen, to non-dual, supermind, 70 years old, experienced, and wise human. Um, this looks kind of like a English second language. And um, yeah, you've ex it sounds like you've had some state experiences. And yes, at your core, we're all a mixture of all these colors. And we need, and we, it's good to embrace that. And yes... This is the conceit. We are already stage 12. We just don't know that yet. Stage 12 is ever present. It occurs prior to time itself, prior to space itself. Um, and I, I, I don't like to talk about it because then I look like a, some kind of some kind of Buddha weirdo. And it, I don't know what I'm talking about. And honestly, I don't I, I think that when when you're at stage 12 in the moment or even just aware of it, you know that. When I'm this brain guy talking at you, I'm not at stage 12. I'm not communicating it to you. I'm not comprehending it. It is not to be comprehended. The supermind comes at you as something external to psyche or prior to psyche. It, it's just the whole thing, the whole reality. It's almost to I identify with objectivity, like the universe, the objective universe itself. Something like that. I, I, I try to move on quickly when I start talking about stage 12. Sophia Fake Virus dash R-O-8-C-C says, Ugh, and then rolly eye face. I'm sorry that I hurt you. And I, Disney. I'm sorry that I hurt you. And um, I hope you keep engaging with my videos. Uh, Kenny Chi 89 this video is so NPC. Yes, I worry about that. Uh, Ken Wilbur warned me that uh, green meme is going to come and uh, destroy my life and cancel me for suggesting that hierarchy exists in human nature. Uh, I'm not sure what exactly you're finding NPC or whether you're on, um, whether you're kind of saying that ironically or you're going to come after me. Um, I have had attacks. Yes. Uh, I've been called a racist. I've been called all sorts of things. And I think everyone on the internet is is uh, is called that way. Um, I'm actually surprised by how few people are calling me a terrible, awful monster bigot. I, I'm assuming that if I get any bigger than this, that'll start happening more. And I, I embrace it. I hope that happens. Um, I would love to be <laughs> a controversial figure. I just, to me, it's just not all that controversial and um i i don't really see how this viewpoint as opposed to some other viewpoint you know is particularly offensive um to that sort of sentiment and it looks like it, it's not gonna load more yeah that was that was a good haul though i might have got 50 in there so uh, <laughs> For those of you who are with me and and not uh, these commenters, I, I apologize. The idea that I had today is that probably no one would show up, and this would be a good way to get the algorithm aware that I do live streams. And 
Um, I didn't tell the Discord. I didn't. I didn't want to have a big thing. <laughs> I was a little nervous about it. And uh, three three people are here, and we're having a good time together. That's that's what I want here. Yeah. Uh, Hyperion Day says, have, "Have you had the United experience?" I'm gonna say no. I'll go ahead and say no. Um, I did hourly Zen practice for several years, and I've had really wild, mind blowing experiences. But I wouldn't identify myself as someone who had had the causal state, uh, the the union state, it's often called enlightenment. I don't consider myself enlightened. I think that I was really close. I think that I had, I do recall having a couple weeks where I had constant consciousness. So I was aware as I fell asleep and went into a dream. And then as I went out of that dream into deep sleep, I was still there on some level i was still watching and that to me is an indicator of that of that state level at least so i've played around with the sort of stage 9 10 11 but i'm not um trying to represent that i'm not trying to be third tier i'm I, i'm as far as integral goes i represent second tier i would say and second tier is trying to understand what third tier even is and as you see in, in the discussion we've had today, like there's a lot of controversy and misunderstanding. And so I think it's a service for me to be here just doing second tier. That frustrates people. And it frustrates people about Ken Wilber as well. Why don't why aren't you a teacher? Why don't why aren't your books all about enlightenment? Well, there's lots of people who've written about enlightenment for thousands of years. And they have written awesome stuff. But again, it's not words, it's not language, it's not concepts. That can help you to form sort of a cognitive backbone there. But this is a practice. This is letting go of attachment, uh, purifying yourself, um, finding unconscious areas, becoming psyche aware. And it's a lot. Uh, it's difficult. You know, I could I could sit here and talk about the challenges of my career or my relationships. And I could talk about the challenges of spirituality and the dark night of the soul and the disillusionment of having states and the, it's a popular sentiment in my community even in the discord like don't bother there's no point there's no infrastructure um the enlightenment in my opinion seems to be more of a talent than a teaching it just seems some people have it some people do that work some people completely let go some people sit under the bodhi tree until they starve to death and that ain't me I, I have um, the genetics of a bipolar person. I'm a werewolf uh, and a vampire. So I'm afraid that if I, if, I have, if I hit that stuff too hard, if I have a kundalini awakening, I'm going to have to be in the hospital. People are going to have to pay for money for my treatment. I, I will screw myself over. I have trauma. I have baggage. And so it's safe and cautious for me to continue to practice at my level as best I can. But I, I mean, I'll tell you straight up, a lot of the people that I interact with are, are at, at a higher state understanding than I am. I'm just completely mind blown to the extent that I've discovered this stuff to be true, uh, that this holds any water, you know, coming from a family that was not plugged into spirituality and a culture that was not plugged into spirituality. I felt betrayed to learn that meditation does anything and is anything. I specifically remember <laughs> uh, watching Ace Ventura in uh, part two in the, in the monastery with the, the Buddhist monks and, and I, what the hell are they doing? What is this sitting and paying attention, doing nothing? What, what is that for? Why do people do that? Yeah, why have they done that all throughout history? What's that all about? It's a good question. It's a really good question. Um, so I, these, there's these sorts of fundamentalisms that pop up. And I think that people who have those union states, those enlightened states, they, they get really into it because it is a super profound, cosmic, loving thing. And you're just like, I want this is my deal. I want the world to learn this. I'm a messiah. I'm a prophet. I'm speaking the word. The, but that ain't me. Like, <laughs> I, I'm just a philosophy dork that's totally astounded by this model and um, trying to legitimize and validate third tier perspectives. But I'm a newbie. 
I don't, I, I do a lot of things. I'm an artist. I'm a coder, a personality. I, I have a job. This is my workplace. It's one of several workplaces. I have struggles and concerns. And man, the last thing in the world I would want to do right now is commit myself to an entire life of pursuing enlightenment. And that might be just the biggest cop out, the biggest excuse, biggest load of crap, but I'm in good company. <laughs> Nearly everyone in the world feels the same way on some level or else they would all be enlightened. So huge kudos and to those who are really in it to win it, who are on a path, who are doing it genuinely. Um, you're the Olympic athletes. You're the pioneers of our time. And the whole point of stage eight and to a lesser, you, you know, these second tier stages is we are giving you credit for that for the first time. And so my goal is just to get people out there knowing that meditation does anything. I, I, that's the service I'm performing. Uh, if I'm really, really awesome and really lucky, some someday I might be talking to you about that state, that state experience I had, or and then later on that stage, that stage that I am. But uh, absolutely not trying to represent that. I'm not trying to pretend. I'm not a guru. I'm not starting a cult. I would love to have more followers. I would love for this to be my career. But <laughs> it's we're not close, and I'm happy with where I'm at. And I'm certainly not enlightened. <laughs> Did I? Wait, I didn't answer. There's no freaking way that I answered them all. Yeah, well, there you go with the hiding the comments thing again. Um, okay, well, that might be a, a good cutoff point. This is the first live stream. I want to do this maybe bi-weekly. Not always comments, um, but some sort of live stream. Uh, now that I'm, I, I felt like this went okay. I'm not sure if I should turn that fan off or if uh, YouTube's doing some sort of noise cancellation. It is a rather loud fan. I apologize. But uh, we're just sorting out the tech side, trying to get this to flow smoothly. I'm sure that when I invite the Discord, we'll get a couple more heads in here. And uh, that then I can be talking to you guys in the chat. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm real behind on the comments. I am building my home right now. <laughs> not entirely. I'm, I'm not like that. But, you know, doing some electrical, doing some plumbing, building cases, uh, designing business operations that I'll go into deeper detail at some point, doing some tech work. And uh, when that laboratory gets set up, it will definitely help me to produce content at a higher level. I'm very aware of bad audio, bad video, bad internet, and bad content. And I really want to do better. And I'm also very happy with how far we've come, what we've done already. I, I am beside myself with the response that I've gotten in spite of those factors, in spite of these being very mediocre DIY garbage videos. To have all these people telling me uh, that I that I mean something to them and that what I'm saying is doing good in the world, I, I just I've been an artist for a long time and I've never seen anything like this. And I want to just take hold of this freaking rainbow set of reins and just jump on that horse as much as I possibly can. I can't I can't even describe you know what it means to me in terms of feeling like legitimized and validated just as an ego, just as a mind to finally like be sitting here talking to anybody whatsoever and in particular people like strangers people i don't even know about this stuff that's been in my mind for decades and whenever i try to talk about it with anyone they shut me down because it's not what they're familiar with it's not their ideology it's not their worldview it's not their belief and Oh, geez, it, just, it means the world to me. I know nobody, it, you're not doing it for me, but uh, you, you, it is being, it's happening and, I, and I'm loving it. So thank you. Um, 
not like really, but episodes. My XGF used to be really bipolar. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of going backwards. Let me go back a little bit. Oh, gee. Um, um, I, I don't have a mouse. I was trying to be a tech guy and not use a mouse. Okay. There's some stuff going. I want to, I want to answer this before I sign off, but I have very little control of my computer and I'm glad this went okay. Um, do do do, uh, absolutely keep your higher stage from your lower stage boss. <laughs> you are the awareness, which is the perspective of each altitude. You are all of them. Have you read the Discord recently? Uh, I, I, it looks like a lot of stuff's going on, uh, but a lot of stuff's going on for me too. And it's been about two days. I, I made random, not random. I made some people moderators and some cr crap. I, I can't wait. I, it's, it's like I, I don't want to be in control of that. I love how it's just like so nuts, and I can't wait to get caught up. And I, I read everything on there. And I do my best to keep up with everything. <laughs> it's been really fun. Now that was good. Yeah, good vibe. Have you had the United experience? I answered that. Coral is usually a midlife crisis thing. Well, a lot of them are usually a midlife crisis thing. But uh, yeah, Coral gets scares us. And that Coral, which is also indigo, is the psychic state as a stage structure, theoretically, after turquoise, first third tier stage. Uh, it's a huge transition. As, as you're becoming ego aware and, and later psyche aware and things are flooding into your awareness that seem like entities or uh, spirits and it certainly disrupts your first tier structures. There's, you know, it, 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 it turns everything over. It's a real table flip. And in terms of what you value and who you think you are, it, yeah, that's the classic. Uh, that's what awakening is. Awakening from the matrix, from this dream, from samsara, maybe. Uh, that's going to change. If it's real, it'll start with the cognitive, the mind, the perception. It'll flow into your values and your emotions and what you feel sympathetic towards. And finally, it becomes who you are and the community that you exist in. Uh now comments on uh, bipolar. Um, there is certainly a connection with, uh, I don't know what I call werewolfism, but bipolar. I haven't had either of the poles, but I know that I have the genetics. Let me just say, I know for certain I'm genetically appropriate <laughs> to have bipolar. And, you know, it's pretty clear. I'm, I'm a little weird. I'm just a little eccentric. So I really believe that I have those genetics, but I've been very careful and I'm uh, I've developed myself to be a trusting person and to have close, intimate people that I can share anything with, like a, a good amount of them. What I find with problem bipolar is that they cannot do that. They don't have people they can trust. They are not supported and they will not allow people to be that to them. That's when the bipolar becomes a problem. Now, anyone with my genetics could be triggered by a lot of different things, exciting things, terrifying things to have a manic episode or a depressive episode. And that could happen to me at any time. But what would happen is people who care about me would come and help me to find help, um, hopefully appropriate help uh, and not just tranquilizing the crap out of me. And because I've developed this kind of trusting nature, I feel like I'm pretty safe and, and nobody needs to worry about my mental Ill my mental health. Um, but also I really don't want to be pushy with, with my, uh, beliefs, with my ideology, with my meditation practice, even, I don't want to push too hard. So I'm a yoga guy. I take it real small and slow. Um, so I think I'm going to probably sign off there. I feel pretty good. I feel like this is a good run. Got, got a little bit of work done, made, made some connections. I, I appreciate you who are here with me, who just popped in, who probably just saw on their feed. Oh, on Think Me's live. Oh, what the heck is this? Yeah, he doesn't have any audio. What a jackass. Thank you for telling me that. I would have gone on quite a while with no audio. <laughs> um, so I think I'm going to hit the road now. I got to get back home. It's uh, it's negative temperatures right now. And I got a 30-minute drive with semis barreling past me. <laughs> and I do not have snow tires. 
So namaste, friends. I love you. You're going to see different kinds of content and more content for sure coming up. Uh, if it's getting towards the evening, have a wonderful night and I will be, I will return. Love you, love you, love you.